And so what I'm going to talk about, just for a few minutes here, is about rewards in our society. I'm going to talk about money, and specifically executive compensation, which is a pet peeve for a lot of people. And uh, if you watch the program, you know I talk to a lot of CEOs, and some of them I do ask about compensation. You know, it wasn't such a big issue when I started covering business in the late 80s, but it certainly is now. Because in, in Canada, the most recent data tell us that for the top 100 CEOs in this country, the average CEO pay package is about $6.6 .6 million all in with all the pieces. Those are figures from 2009, the most recent. So now stick with me because that's low compared with the United States. Before the crisis in the US, CEOs at S&P 500 companies, the big companies in the United States, were getting 411 times on average what a factory worker was getting. In Canada, those figures I mentioned before, the 6.6 .6 million, that's about 155 times the average earner who gets about $43,000 a year. Last week I was in Montreal interviewing a bunch of uh, business leaders and I spoke with the CEO of National Bank. Big bank, not as big as the other five, but still 19,000 employees. He makes 5.2 million a year. That's what his package is. That is below the average. 5.2 million is below average. Uh, and being below average, if you do the simple math, means you're getting about 100,000 a week. That's below average. So if you're an entrepreneur, like Bruce or a Steve Jobs, you create something, people buy it, that's one thing. If you create the iPad, you get the keys to the castle. But if you're paid by shareholders as a professional manager or the hired help, as Steven Jaroslawski said to me last week, he's a major investor in Canada, it's a very different story. I mean, the way he put it was, who wants a mercenary at the wheel of the company? Somebody who's just doing it for money. Furthermore, the big question is, who decides how much they should get? CEOs, when you ask them, this is exactly what the CEO of National Bank told me, it's supply and demand. They love to say it's supply and demand. And so my question is, where exactly is this invisible market, you know, so we can see the prices, how supply and demand works, and how the price is clear? The truth of the matter is, and I've had lots of people tell me this, is it's really set by peers, not by some market, some invisible market for talent. It is set by consultants, typically hired by compensation committees of boards of directors. And those committees are usually made up of other executives, because it's usually other CEOs or often other CEOs on the board. So if you're a peer, let me ask you this. Are you going to pay somebody less? Because one day, it's going to be your turn and they're going to be looking at your package. So everybody plays along with the game. And if you're the compensation consultant, the hired hand, as it were, are you going to get another gig if you don't play along? These are the questions. And these packages, these compensation packages, have become so complicated. There's salary, there's base salary, there's bonus, there's short-term incentive, there's long-term incentive, there are pension contributions multifaceted contracts, the boards of these big companies will hire a compensation consultant and pay that person $100,000 just to put together the package. And the word incentive is a word that really blows me away when you talk about all this stuff because CEOs, I don't know if you know anybody, but they have to be the most motivated people on the face of the earth. So the question then becomes, why do they need incentives? Well, then you get the response, they'll leave. We don't want them to leave, you know, uh, if, if we don't give them what they want. Okay, so for once, let's see a board of directors call their bluff. Do you think that, this is a rhetorical question I'm going to ask, do you think that a CEO of one of the big five banks in this country, and they get more than the average, by the way, you're, you're talking in the 10 to 12 million range, so that's, say, if it's 12, that's a million a month, 250 a week, 50 a day, you kind of get the idea there. Everybody loves those figures. Do you think if the boards of directors said, fellas, 
We're going to give you two million, all in, take it or leave it. You think they'd walk? I don't think any of them would walk. That's just me saying that one man's view, as Bruce said. It's a great job. You're one of the leaders of Canadian society. I mean, would they go to the United States where banking is so much more fun? <laughs> where are they going to go? You know, <laughs> they've got the best job. Uh, now, I don't want to be unfair. These are smart, hardworking people with very, very good skills, and they're very highly regarded. But these banks, I'm just picking on the banks here, they're not. They're hundreds of years, they're 100 years old, at least, most of these banks. They're not creating the company. They're not Steve Jobs. They have an oligopoly in Canada. They're custodians of very powerful utilities. And their main job, when they come in, is not to wreck the joint, basically. You know, add value at the margin, but don't bugger it up. So, just so I'm not picking on bankers here, how about somebody like Michael McCain? He did, everybody seems to agree, a great job with a tragic situation when they had the Listeria situation at Maple Leaf Foods. He's making about six and a half million, around that average. I had him in for an interview not that long ago. Because he's now restructuring the company because the stock has performed not very well for a long time. So, you know, he's got to close plants, probably lay off people. But I asked him if he's taking a pay cut. He's not taking any pay cut. Why not work for a million, I said, during this tough period for the company? You know, so you're all sort of in it together. Well, he said, I don't set the compensation. The board does. I said, well, you know, you're on the board. Said, well, <laughs> but the compensation committee of the board is the one that sets it. And I'm not in the comp committee. That would be a conflict. Fair enough. Well, you could say no. And... Well, I didn't get any further. Um, one thing that you hear over and over again is that a lot of these people, they like to compare themselves to sports stars. What about baseball players, they say, you know, who earn $15 million a year? Well, for one thing, they're not as entertaining as baseball players, but the last time I checked, baseball players didn't OD on subprime mortgages and put the financial system in peril. And the last time I checked, you could tell when a baseball player hit a home run or struck out. The numbers are public. The stats are very, very public. Now, they're public with publicly traded companies, too. But when a publicly traded company hits a home run, how much of it is the team of 60 or 70,000 people versus the CEO? You can't, you can't really tell. Brings up the Apple example. For instance, we're all waiting to see what happens with Apple in the post Steve Jobs era. But, you know, when things are good, CEOs often put on the humble hat and they say, oh, it's the team. It's the team that did it, not me. But when it comes to payday, the team is on the bench. Now, it may motivate the CEO, but how demotivating is it for the team, especially when people are pinched, as they are today more and more? In the United States, for instance, uh, average annual earnings are about 7% less than they were in 1999 in real terms. That comes from the Census Bureau in the United States very recently. 46 million people in poverty. That's about a, a fifth of the United States population. Here, consumer debt levels are at an all-time high. We Canadians are in hawk, 146% of, uh, of our income. Why is that? Well, I asked... Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of Canada, last time he was on. And partway through the interview, I said to him, you know, do we have high consumer debt levels because very few people have seen their wages rise in real terms for a long time? And that's the one time he really paused and had to think about the answer. And I'll ask you this, what about your pensions? Given what's happening in the market the last couple of years, do you feel like you're going to have enough to retire on? Well, I can assure you, in these packages the CEOs have, they are going to have a lot to retire on. And you don't just hear this from me, by the way. Hal Jackman is one of the richest people in this country and one of the most generous, donating to just about everything in this city. He actually passes around little business cards that have that 411 times figure 
for the S&P 500 CEOs. He passes those cards out. He's so upset about CEO compensation. Warren Buffett, very, very rich people. So I don't think there's anything wrong with paying some people more than others. It's the multiple that's the issue. One forestry uh, CEO, retired forestry CEO, told me that he thinks he has a good formula. And it would be 10 times for the CEO what the top union salary is. So if the foreman in the paper mill gets $100,000 a year, the CEO is getting a million. And that may have some validity. Um, I mean, as Hal Jackman says, who can't live on a million dollars a year? You know, we're constantly hearing about the rise of China, India, and Brazil. And there, we're always being told the middle class is growing. But here, what we're doing is we're putting our middle class, the bulk of our people, at risk. And as we all know from history, that has not led to good things. Polarization of rich and poor. It's starting to happen here, one of the most successful places on earth. So that's my rant for today. 